All right, we're back at, with Dean. We're here with the lungfish. With one of the coolest fish I've ever seen in my life, the lung, the South American lungfish. Yes. That you personally collected. And this this happens to be the only fish in my house that actually has a name. Yeah, what's the name? Lumpy. Lumpy? <laughs> <laughs> so where'd you get this guy? So we caught this on my first trip to the Amazon with my wife and daughter in an oxbow lake, which is basically a dried up stream bed that's turned into a lake. And it was about five and a half inches long. One of the best and also the worst days of collecting because it was the only day I decided to not wear my long pants and long shirt. And I got bit to holy heck by the bugs and the ants and the spiders. <laughs> and uh, had water beetles biting my ankles inside my rubber boots. Uh, but we had, we had seined this area where we had to get in the seine and remove the um, vegetation as we pulled the seine. And I kept seeing this little eely thing that we didn't know what it was. And finally it just happened to roll my way in the net and here he is three years later many inches and many girth he was he was about the size of a hot dog <laughs> wow. literally not a sausage a hot dog and um in here with monk eye red eye tetra yeah red eye tetra um those we collected on the on the trip i went to puerto maldonado with corian oh wow so even the tetras are wild caught yes they are yeah and we'll, we'll just see, I'm, I'm about to dump some food in here. If I tap the tank, he usually knows. Yeah, you can train reptiles to do the same thing. Well, the whole key is I don't want the Tetris to take all of the food. Oh. Now, his, his way that he eats is, I find, kind of amazing. He will, he will get the piece of food in his mouth and then he will kind of, I want to say, pre-chew it until it forms long cylindrical shape and then he'll just swallow it. Oh, wow. There he goes. He, he's got one now, right? Yep. That's a good shot. I know. <laughs> he's smiling. So right now he's kind of processing it. He's he's compressing it, turning it into a tube, and then he'll swallow it. It'll come back out of his mouth before it goes down. This is easily one of the coolest fish I've ever seen. There, is it coming back out? Yep. Oh, sucked it back in. Do that a couple times. That's really bizarre. Like, I get it, but... Oh, there it went. Now it's gone down, right? Yep. Wow. What else do you feed it besides shrimp? Uh, pellets, algae pellets, algae wafers. Um, uh, it, it used to, when it was smaller, it would take bloodworms, but now they never hit the bottom because the tetras get them. Uh, frozen clams out of the shell. Uh, frozen mussels, pieces of fish. Basically anything. A lot of people will feed them pieces of raw chicken, but I just can't find myself to do that. I, when it comes to chicken and raw, you know, that does, doesn't work for me. <laughs> yeah. Being that I was in the culinary industry for a while, when it comes to chicken and, you know, the, the cleanliness and the... I just don't want to... I don't want to... I mean, he would probably take cooked chicken, but, you know, I have all the other foods available, so... You know how to sex these, Bob? Um, no. Neither do I. <laughs> Now these 
I don't know much about them, but they do like riverbeds will dry up and they yes. live outside of water. They like, they will burrow, burrow in the mud. They they kind of go in head first and make a teardrop shape out of their body and completely encase themselves in the mud and then they can they can literally dry out and live through a dry season. Wow. Do you know what their lifespan is? I'm guessing it's pretty long, but I have no idea. Yeah, I'll look at it and put it on the screen. Yeah, I saw this fish and I was like, yeah, we're definitely making a video out of this fish. <laughs> well, he he's freaked me out a little bit because all of these rocks used to be piled up almost as high as the bottom of the overflow pipe in there, it's holding that black pipe to the back of the tank. And I was eating dinner one night and the wood used to be standing up and everything. I was eating dinner one night and all of a sudden I'm hearing this thrashing and I heard these rocks come banging on the glass. I thought it was, I thought it was gonna break, I really did. And he was just rearranging the whole tank. And I'm like, okay, it's his tank. <laughs> he can do what he wants, I guess. Lumpy the lungfish. I'm guessing, what would you say, two feet long right now? Pretty close, yeah. What is it, a three foot tank? It's a three foot tank. Yeah, that's a pretty And good he's guess. fully stretched out, yep. Any plans to upgrade him? Uh, he needs a bigger tank right now, in my opinion. I would like to go. You say you have a 240 for sale? I bought this. Oh, <laughs> now I personally have a 300 gallon that he, he would nicely. he would love that. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I do think that other fish could go in there with him as long as he got food. Yeah, you can see some of these might have been chomped on. Like yep. this guy here. Yep. There you go. I feel like he's got a hold of that one a couple times. Maybe at night um, when they come down. Yeah. Uh, when they were small, I mean, I put him in there at about an inch. I never had any problems. But now, if I d was to drop frozen bloodworms in, he would never get any. They would outcompete him for the food. And so I have to, I have to drop a food in that's going to sink rel relatively quickly. I bet it would be safe with uh, like any nano fish, like a ras giant oh, school of rasboras. Sure. You wouldn't yeah. care about them. No, that would look awesome. Not a big enough bite for him, I don't think. Yeah. And I'm always a I'm always a believer is if, if they're well fed they're not eating each other. Makes sense. All right, well thanks for showing me your lungfish. You got it. I appreciate it. You bet. <laughs>